Is everyone ready and excited for the last talk of the day? Yay! That's what I'm talking about. That's more like it. Yeah, I know, right? All right, uh, I'm going to not take up any more of Frederick's time. So please join me in welcoming Frederick Stuck Alexanderson. Such a pleasure being here. And um, yay. <laughs> It's going to be fun. I, I'm not going to do the thing that all the other cool people did, like space hacking and shit. None of that. <laughs> but I'm going to show you some neat stuff that's probably going to, you know, change the way you think about your research. Because all of you do cool fucking stuff, and that stuff needs to be viewed by people. And a way to do that is simply to make sure that it gets available and find. That's why we're going to have it. today's topic is uh, how to write a banger blog post and uh, the importance of having a personal brand. So uh, this is my, this is not my, this is my name. Hi. Uh, this is my friend Stefan. Um, he's, uh, he's from Germany and he has this really cool website uh, where he puts uh, articles around hacking and stuff. That's what he does. And he has somewhere around 70 to oh, sometimes 100,000 views every month on the content that he creates, which is pretty sweet. And that's not a fluke because he understands the value of keyword research. So as we can see here, SEOSEC, which is his domain, he's ranking on these positions like one, two, two, one, two, two, one on these, these different topics here on Google search. And that is everywhere, internationally. So he gets on hack book, books on hacking, hacking books, best hacking books, and then eventually uh, hack WordPress website. Not that many people looks at that, but hey, it's still, people are still interested in doing that. So he drives that traffic. And you can see here, these are the estimates of amount of searches every month uh, that's being made. Uh, 11,300 on hack books, and he gets an average around 4,000 on that. Pretty sweet, right? Because the thing is that all these different keywords that he ranks on, he's driving into this blog post that he runs ads on. So he can keep back and relax and have a really good time while people purchase stuff online on the internet, and he's getting a good side hustle income. Not bad for writing a blog, right? In the meantime, I'm over here, 100,000 subscribers on my YouTube, a couple of looks, and I earn about less what you guys charge an hour. So I'm, I'm a bit jealous there. And the reason why this is working out for Stefan is that he understands SEO, which is search engine optimization. But he also understands search engine result pages, which is this SERP thing. This is marketing baba, but you'll get used to it after a while. And what is, when we're talking about ranking SERP, it's this, getting the number one spot on your keyword that you're searching for on a typical uh, topic and then adapting accordingly. To rank on number one, there's, well, there's over 100 factors. That, and you, to, be, to be really fair, Google don't really talk about it. They don't tell anyone, and most people just guess around. And you can guess around pretty well by earning about 52,000 a year to be a SEO specialist. This is an average salary. I'm not an expert. This is not me. But I'm going to show you some neat tricks that's going to help you to you know, get your content seen. If you spend a lot of time doing research, it's way more fun if people read it, right? So we're going to talk about keyword research. We're going to talk about domains and their authority. We're going to talk about titling and metadata, SERP clickbaits, uh -huh. uh, file names, redirects, and other stuff. In short, we're going to talk about how you can get things to rank on the first page on Google. Awesome. Very mind with me, though. Content is king. You need to provide value when you do these things. If you don't, Google is going to penalize you because you're, you're farming backlinks or you, you're stuffing keywords in your page, and they don't like that. So 
don't, don't go black hat SEO on me. Uh, try to do it the ordinary way, and Google is going to love you for that. Um, here's another thing, too. Most of us in tech, not really as common in Sweden as it is internationally, spend about three to five years at a company. That's, a long, that's the time we spend between we changing employers. And during that time, we want to do the things that we do. We want to do cool research that's amazing and mind-breaking and, and everything's all awesome. And leave all that marketing shit to the, the marketing people that have you know, inspirational boards and do marketing strategies and, and, and other things that they think is super, super important while you're there and doing your cool research. So you're doing your stuff and you're relying on that marketing organization to, uh, at the office to help you out. I get it. I did that too. So... So when, when they have this brainstorming meeting where they're going to create their content calendar uh, together, they're like, okay, let's talk about the research that this guy made. Fuck no, let's do talk about sales because that's what marketing are here for. Their job is to drive money. You're meant to do something else. So um, when you quit that job and say, I'm done with this, <laughs> well, now I'm going to go somewhere else and have fun. The thing is that you're going to have a new squad of marketing people to rely on. That's going to do, oh, we're going to do cool research. Fuck no. We're going to do sales. So you need to start the whole process over again every three to five years, which is not that fun. And that is why you need a personal brand. Okay? I see a lot of intro introverts in here. Don't freak out. You don't need to be like me. You can have a domain where you write stuff and share information and cool things, right? Because who knows where you're going to be in the next three to five years. And wouldn't it be cool then to just fall back on the things that you created over years? And even though you have your own domain, bear with me here. Company says, well, you did this research actually on your, uh, on your work time. It belongs to us. You said, yes, that is true. Is it okay if I publish it on my own website as well? So I can drive you traffic and help you build more uh, authority around your business company domain. You're going to say, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a win-win, right? You drive traffic to them, they drive traffic to you, everybody's happy. So owning your own brand is quite interesting. Let's do a case study for the fun of it. I mean, wh why not do practical things? This is my friend Christopher, Kug. Uh, Kug likes to uh, do barbecue, but he also likes to hack a lot of things. I took that picture, quite happy about that, by the way. Uh, he used to work at F-Secure, which is now named something else that I don't know what it is. Uh, and he has this domain called jerkeby.se, and it's quite fresh. You see here on way back URLs, it hasn't been active since like the mid of 2021, probably where he decided that maybe I should do something else with my life. So he bought a domain. And the question is, why did he go for a .com domain or a .se domain? Jerkeby.se is a Swedish domain. Well, he was smart there. He didn't, he didn't really know it at the time, but he was really smart because the whole idea with getting a localized domain is that we're in Sweden now. When we search on things, a .se domain has got to get higher ranking on the sites that we do. Kug is doing business in Sweden. That's where he, make, he has his uh, customers, and that's where he's moving around. He don't really care about India. He doesn't care about the U.S. Well, if you're speaking at a conference, maybe, but n not really. And when you're doing domains, there's different kind of things you need to think about. Should it be a subdomain? Which is cool, that kind of works, but you, you need to deal with it SEO-based as different sites. Just like a dot, uh, dot .se domain, a dot .de domain needs to be treated differently. Because if I change, let's say, blog.example.com to www.example.com, all those backlinks that I created earlier go down the drain. So all the reputation you built up over the years 
that's going to be gone since you're greedy and want another domain. So think about it first. Right. So he has his domain. You have that too now, right? Because all of you need domains. I'm not affiliated with GoDaddy. I probably should. Um, but so you write your code and you put it up there and you're all happy. The next step is to make Google aware of the things that you actually do. This is called indexing. There's a great tool called Google Search Console, which is mandatory for you to use if you use a website, because this is where you register your domain, show your proof that you own it by using all these fancy authentication things. That means Google's going to pick it up and know that you're doing stuff. And that's also where you can, uh, you can look for what kind of keywords people are searching for that hits your domain. You can also adapt to it. It's really important. And a way to identify if the domain you have is actually indexed is doing like a Google dork. Cite your site. Things show up, congratulations, you've been indexed. Sh things doesn't show up, sucks being you. And that can take up to six months. Uh, these ones are super boring. Nobody really cares about robust.txt and sitemap.xml. It's just annoying stuff, unless you're a crawler. And unless you're Google and Bing and whatever, because robot.txt kind of means, please don't look at these, uh, while sitemap XML is, wow, you can index all this stuff that comes here. And I actually updated things for you right now, Google crawler. So please update that information inside the index. This is crucial if you are releasing uh, blogs and whatever, because you want to rank up. Kug on the other hand decided he didn't need those. So he got a 404 on both of those, which means that Yerekbi.se has a quite low domain authority. It's not really trusted, like a sitemap.xml would make a difference, but, but that's the whole thing. And if you, and you see, he has no traffic and everything, 14 referring IPs. But if you take Centur instead, they, they, they're good at their stuff, they do. They're currently ranking somewhere around Alexa ranking 6 million or so, that could be better. But domain authority is good, and they get a lot of reference. This is what is defined as a trusted domain. 33 is cool. Then we have my friend Daniel Meisler. He has a podcast, he has a newsletter, he do a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. He's currently ranking on about 100,000 on the Alexa top uh, 1 million website. That's a good number. He has a domain authority of 65. And if people are very actively helping him push, which means that if I get featured on his domain and he links me, I get the authority of Danny Meisler hitting my site. Because that is what is defined as domain authority. That's why you need a lot of backlinks and relevant content so these crawlers and engines and everyone else can do the things that they say they don't do, rank you. Because everything, according to Google, there's no thing named domain authority. There's no thing named something else because they want to rewrite the, the thing all the time. So, of course, they don't want to do that. But, like I mentioned, it's really important to remember that. If you link people, uh, or people link you, that's a good thing, because that's going to give you a chance to, you know, level up your game a bit and gain more authority. Like Stefan's website, for instance, we talked about that earlier. 2,000 websites is linking him, and he has about 16,000 backlinks referring to his domain. That's good. That, it, that strengthens his domain, and that's why he gets a higher ranking. Because if you're doing that well, you're all good. But remember when I said that... Um, your website, if it's cool, your authority strengthening somewhere else. Like I would say, authority strengthening in this case would be, uh, this is a great hacker. I'm currently now authority strengthening this. Or, or I could say, um, um, Jason is a great hacker there as well. And Cook is a fraud. That is something else. Like you'll, you'll figure things out, how it works. But for me personally, I don't care, but Google cares about the authority and how that works. And what you can do if you want to be sneaky, because let's say you're Centaur and you get this great blog post and you don't want to link to TrueSec because that's a competition or how we want to see it. You can add this no follow here. That means the main authority stops here. So they can link our really, really cool blog post that we do and say, no follow, no credits for you, which is great. 
if you don't want to dabble with your uh, com competitor. And this other, uh, this website here, a ahrefs.com is where you can do that lookup, and it's quite simple. It'll, it'll just calculate the amount of backlinks you had and other stuff and look for that. My site, for instance, has 239 website links. My site, 1,200 backlinks, a domain rating of 13. And Security Fest, on the other hand, has uh, 29, which is pretty decent. Because you can see I have 23% do follow, which means people will strengthen my authority, and they have 63%. So they have a higher amount of people that say that's trusted. Apparently, you shouldn't trust me, so I have no problem with people not trusting the things that I do and strengthening my authority. That's cool. Uh, CNN, on the other hand, very credible. 93% in the domain rating. That's sick. But they also have about 500 million links pointing to their domain. And a lot of those are pointing back. Google, on the other hand, he has some work to do. Uh, he has not that much. Domain rating is quite low. But we dig into the things that he's been working with, because I got mad respect for Christopher. And I know he's super smart and done awesome hacks. He just hasn't built his own personal brand. Uh, let's check out the top referred uh, blog post that ha he has on his domain. And that is Jerkeby newsletter post risk aware applications. Nine external sites has linked into that. So let's dig into see what it is. Risk aware applications, that seems cool. Um, let's do some search engine analysis of this and we can realize that he has mentioned, first off, the title is risk aware applications. You can see all, also in the URL there. So risk-aware application seems like the thing he wants to push here. That's the word that's really interesting. But he only mentioned it twice. That's a little bit too low for Google to think that is super cool. Uh, he mentioned risk a bunch of times and also application. So those, are, th those he probably could rank on. But risk? That's going to be very, very hard because risk is so, so wide. And most people, when they search, they don't search for risk, cyber. They, they will search for something similar like the one that he did. So let's identify that. Risk-aware application. That seems like, OK, we have something here, right? But nobody's actually searching for it. So he spent a lot of time writing this epic blog post. Banger. Nobody's searching for it. So I was like, OK, makes sense. Sweden, right? Because he's .se, and I was interested to see like what's the search traffic in Sweden. But I went global on Google Trends, and it doesn't even exist. Nobody cares about risk-aware applications. And that is why keyword research when you're writing stuff is crucial, because otherwise your, web, your blog post might just be very, very lonely on a part of the internet that nobody will ever find. So let's imagine Cook saw this talk, right? And now he's ready to do another banger. You know, this is going to be great. So he, he, he ponders a bit and thinks that security chaos engineering, tasty. I'm going to see what that does. So he types it in and he checks it out and he says, oh, chaos engineering? Seriously, 11,000 searches every month. That seems really cool. And it's absolutely trending as well. This one is an up and comer. Problem is, chaos engineering, in this case, is a more generic term. And it's quite hard for us to rank on because you see, the keyword result possibility to rank among the behemoths that mentioned this is going to be quite hard. 46 on this scoring is a challenge for him with 1.5. So it's going to be tricky. So, but Cookie's smart. He knows how to funnel and narrow down. So he goes for security chaos engineering, which is definitely within his niche, right? And you can see here about 240 search a month. Still good. I mean, it's, it's an up and comer. There's a chance for him to take a position here. And you can see that it's, it's in the green here. That means 23 is that's, that's simple. That's you waking up in the morning, writing uh, the things that I told you, and you're going to rank on this. Because, but we are in a challenge because if we see 23 here, and this went to something, something, has a domain ranking of 16 and takes position five with no links to it. So, yeah, 
we're probably going to get that. Uh, so it's not really a big challenge for us. But as everything in life, before we go in and attack, we need to do recon, and we need to know our competition. That apparently wasn't the thing that the current warlords uh, thought about, so they didn't do any recon. But if you can see this cool icon up there, the quotation quote, that is defined in Google terms as, um, let's see here, position zero. It, it's not official, but that's the, that's the thing. If, if you get quoted on Google, you've seen all those, like Wikipedia gets quoted. That's like, you, the second that happens, you're like, mm -hmm, authority, that person is definitely king of the caster. I'm going to trust whatever that says. So let's dig into that. Because what are our competition? Well, it's O'Reilly, apparently. I mean, they're strong with their 91, uh, 91 of domain authority. It's going to be tricky. Uh, and then open source the other article. But the rest of the competition is quite easy. So let's say that we want to aim for third. I mean, that's good enough for us. So let's dig in and see what we can do with this. So this is the top ranking website on this content. Very cool. So what we do is that we'll take all the blog post information, copy that, and paste that into Word Counter, for instance, because we want to know how many words they wrote. Uh, they wrote 1,600 words. We're going to write 2,500 words because we're doubling down on the content and we're providing more value. Google's going to say, more value. Definitely more interesting which is cool. And since we're smart and professional, we understand that Google is very picky about spelling mistakes and just not having a good conversation and flow. I know you researchers, don't worry. But you need to be able to talk fuff or, or soft language with people that, or at least the search engine. I mean, that's how it works. And, and the whole thing is that the key to success here is not only to get a nice spell checker, it's also to provide a solution to the problem of the people that's looking for the things that you provide. Solve a problem, right? So let's see the keyword density of our competition. In this case, we can see that chaos engineering is the one we're going for, right? And it's been mentioned about eight, is it nine times? Nine times, right? How many times should we write it? Any guesses? Absolutely, I love that, but we can do 12. <laughs> That's more than enough because we provide more value in content related to the original blog, po blog post. But if you can double down on it, well, that's cool. And you can also see here that the, the keyword that we want to rank on, security chaos engineering, they use that six times. So we can definitely use that a bunch of times more, right? Uh, and we dig into the website, and we can see that, OK, is there any other things that we can adapt when we want to do things? Yes, it is. Opensource.com references to Article 18 slash 1 slash new paradigm in cybersecurity. OK, that's cool. It has nothing to do with the title. But uh, well, it, it kind of has. It has paradigm for cybersecurity. How many people do you think sit there and, mm, I'm going to Google for paradigm in cybersecurity? Probably not, or maybe this guy, I don't know. So another way for us to boost our identification on just owning that keyword would be for us to look at the competition again. In this case, we look at the images. They had one image on the website, which is cool. Uh, that means that we will have at least three. Uh, and that image is, um, is labeled like this. Sites default files lead images file underscore bank vault secure safe dot png. I'm quite amazed that it doesn't say the resolution uh, or a screenshot something something date, which is more common. Uh, and what we do since we're since we're master people now and JetQB is the one we're doing, we'll change that. So we'll have the path be security dash chaos dot engineering, which turns into space not space space, but space in Google indexing. And we'll name the file security chaos engineering is the new black. Because if we only do the name, they're going to say, OK, and we see what you're doing here. 
but we're not. We're, we're trying to explain something else. Like, and, and then we're going to name the files differently. It's going to be, uh, it's a new black and it's uh, explained or super cool and all that. And we're going to top that thing up with not having a boring safe that has nothing to do with the thing we do, and instead add a really clickbaity image where apparently a real cool security conference uh, and a guy that says security chaos engineering explained. And then here you say, like, oh, why? why do you even put text in there? Well, you, we all know that. S Google identifies things by using their magical things. And if there's text on it that relates to the name of the file, there's a pretty big chance that these guys really care about the subject. And to really boost it off, you know, kick it off the rafts, what we do is that we're going to add uh, alt text. And you're like, alt text? Pe are people blind that read my blog post? Probably a bad idea. But the thing is that that also adds trust. And, it, and you're not supposed to stuff like security chaos engineering, comma, DevOps, comma, something else to gain more keywords in there. It needs to be explanatory, but it shouldn't be more than 125 characters. Not a novel, but enough to Google to understand that you're being serious. And if we really want to boost the game here, and this is one of the last game changers, is that Google, it's the world's largest, largest search engine. We can agree on that, right? The second largest search engine is YouTube. And that means we got, if we also publish a, a video on YouTube on this subject, we'll get the search engine optimization from Google and also the trust from YouTube, which means that when we search, there's a big chance that um, that Google is going to present a YouTube video in the video search, uh, in the search for you, which is yours. <laughs> That's going to relate to the things that you do. And, and that is very, very important, because that way we can strengthen our, our own authority. And we'll also embed that on a page. So when the crawler keeps in, it's going to say, wow, three images, dude. 2,500 words providing value and a video on the subject, and a lot of links to cool people. Some not follow, some, yeah. Definitely going to be interesting for us. We're going to rank that high. So they rank you high. And, this, and now the other factor comes in. Search engine result page clickbait. You're like, uh, clickbait? I'm Jan Delagen. I don't clickbait. I'm, I'm going to be very careful with that, but this is the thing. If, if you get a search and you see some results, what your eyes going to do is like, nah, 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 okay, this I resonate with, boom, you're good. And if it's just gibberish there that you can't resonate with or that doesn't tell you to do stuff, you're most likely not going to click it. You go for the other one that's more fitting to your needs. And uh, Mangos has this tool called Search Engine uh, SERP Simulator, where you can type in, you can test things around. So let's say we have um, chaos, uh, uh, security chaos engineering. I did this. <laughs> uh, and then we can say, what is security chaos engineering? Are you shifting left? DevOps, all the things. Here are 10 great insights that would help you become security chaos engineering compliant in no time. Definitely CISO clickbait. So, and if we compare to that to the top ranking one where it says, uh, security chaos engineering, a new paradigm in cybersecurity, dot, dot, dot. Too long, doesn't fit in. Look at a mobile, and it's going to cut half of it out. The second one is explore how the principles behind open source collaborations, transparency, and rapid prototyping are given catalysts for innovation. <laughs> what? what? Too techy for me. I'm CISO. I want to know about the other things. And then we got social backlinks, right? Because you write this really cool blog post. And uh, yeah, Kibin, in this case, he says, like, um, it will cook, he DMs me. He says, Stuck, uh, do you mind if you could you know, share the new blog post that I wrote? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Of course, I'll do that. I got about 103,000 people that engage with my content on Twitter. I'm a bia <laughs> and, I've been, and I've been doing this continuously since 2018. I didn't have anything then. 2022, got a bunch of people looking at the stuff that I do. So many people that I actually got about 3.2 million people looking at the things that I do, which is nice. Hackfluencer. 
And that is very important for us to understand that if I'm going to share stuff, I want it to look good. So the people that engage with my stuff say, ooh, I'm going to click that one. And if we do that right, like here, you can see that the top one is the Twitter one. You see no line breaks here. And, and then it's the LinkedIn one, which is more boring, but you can probably add some more stuff in there as well, because this is adaptable. And that is what you do inside the meta tags. Meta, tag, meta tags. So, and this is very important. I know this is boring, but you need to do this. And uh, if you add all these things in, not are you only doubling down on what is defined as keywords, and, but you're also telling Google that I'm serious about shares. Please make sure that this is getting it shared to as many people as possible. So you write stuff in there, and you sneak in things like uh, keywords, security, chaos engineering, chaos engineering, and DevSecOps, because you, you, you want to do that. And if you're not feeling like coding and shit, here, meta tags that I would help you out. You're going to say what kind of resolution you need, and you drag that into a cool picture that looks great, definitely clickable, and you can adapt and try things around and feel like, mm, feels good. This is, and, and you can send that to your friends and say, would you click this? I mean, Jason would probably do that in a phishing attempt, but that's another story. So if you optimize that, and meta that I will spit out all these tags for you. So you can be human, write in text that you like, you get a feel for it, and you'll get that coming out. And you publish that on your website. You make sure to change that, uh, the meta tags I use stuff in there. Obviously, you need to look at the code. You don't run any bash script from the internet. You don't put any code that's been created by someone else on your website. So you go through those, and you put that out. And you share it to, to a friend in a DM somewhere, right? Or, or share it. What's going to happen is uh, maybe you do that on Twitter. Like you, you Twitter send it uh, to someone. What Twitter is going to do is that it's going to get in there and it's going to take the image and then it's going to cache it. And you change your image on the blog post. You share it again because you realize that a picture of you in shorts in the summer season saying security engineering didn't resonate. You share it again. Oh, crap, the old picture is there. Damn it. Then you can go in here. This is Cards Validator for, for Twitter, where you'll flush the cache. So we'll do a new fetch of your site uh, and update the image into their cache. So all your new sharing would be up to date with the things you do. And that's the thing. It's going to it's going to change recursively. So if, uh, if I shared something last week, and you go on Twitter, and I've sh uh, updated my stuff there, you're going to get the new image. So, and then that way, you can A and B test shit. Right? Like, really? That didn't work out with CISOs. I need something that would trigger them more. And then you can find things that they will be interacting with. I take no responsibility for the picture chosen for this blog post by the TrueSec marketing team. Bearded guy looking sadly into uh, window reflection has nothing to do with Potem or domain uh, or being a domain administrator. Probably sad system engineer. Here's another thing. We talked about social links, right? So I'm sure I did a collaboration with Hack the Box a while back, and they are very interested in tracking the things that they do. It's like, hey, Stack, we like you. Can you do stuff for us? I'm like, yeah, I can do stuff for you. Pay me. And say, okay, cool. But then our marketing wants to know the tracking. We want to know that we invested in something that gave results. And they gave me this link, and that's something that's in my contract. So you provide me a UTM analytics link, and I'll, in, and I'll put that on whatever post I do. Things that this is so fucking long that if you're going to tweet it, half the tweet's going to be gone anyway. And, and it kind of gives things away in a way that I don't like. Oh, medium, social, blah, 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 campaign, CS, CTF. Most people write in weird stuff here, like campaign names, marketing people. <laughs> Sketchy. I don't want to have that. So what I do is that I have my website, stokefrey.com, and I do a 302 redirect on a link that I send to this. 
That way, I'm sharing on my social media, hey, you should join this really cool CTF. Check out stokefrederick.com slash CTF. That's all I'm saying in my blog post or my video because I'm not going to say, hi, check out this www.hacktobox.com slash event slash cyber-apocalypse 2020 question marks UTM and, and so on. So you need something that's really fast and understandable, especially if you're doing content or podcast or whatever. Like a bunch of you probably have some cool stuff that you want to share. Yeah, Kibi has one. And he would probably just do, you know, something like Yeah, Kibi does slash cool research. And then you can change whatever blog post you want to have at cool research. Because you can change that over time. And it's going to create backlinks for you on the, the big sites everywhere. So it's going to be really cool. So let's do another case study, right? Uh, because I can't, I can't just stand here and talk about the things you should do without you know, doing things, like hacking and done doing the POC. So I figured we'd do some POCs. Um, a while back, the Potem came out. Uh, and it has about. 5,500 searches every month. People are interested in this. So we needed to be in a situation where we had TrueSec, and in this case, Ben Pry, Bidmead, said that, oh, Stuck, I got this cool idea. I have this park, and I want to share it. Could we do that? I'm like, yep, but you need to write the blog post for me. <laughs> like, damn it. And we need to think about the things that you want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Because that's the whole thing. We need to explain that in the title and needs to be referenced in the URL. In this case, we decided that the keywords that we want to target on search results would be Potem and TLM Relay and Active Directory. We put those all together in one, right? So NTLM is being mentioned 19 times in the blog post, Potem 16, and it's all, Potem was our main target here. So we got that both in the, uh, in, the, um, in the headers, we got that in the title description, in the URL, you remember that one, right? And we also, you know, we threw in on Active Directory there for good measure. I mean, why not 10 times? And then we started to break it down. Like having a good time here, we were explaining things step by step procedure. This is how you do it. And this is very important because you can do all these things and eventually, and eventually you'll do profit because you're a domain administrator. Very easy to follow. The next step with this would be not to implement an image, but a code snippet so people can copy paste stuff. Because you, like I, like everyone else, get really freaking annoyed when we're going to do hack stuff. We have to type it, we want to copy paste. So, and, and, and Google says, copy paste, providing value. Good, so we do that too. Links to external parties. Some we send good traffic, some we don't. Uh, and then we have a solution to the problems in bullet points like this. Bam, bam, bold, age three ones. Very cool images like this. Very boring image. But the naming of the file, Pity Potent and Delivery Lay, Kiki, Tiggity Ask, Bay64, and then he had to push the damn resolution in there, but I'm okay with that. Uh, and that is also important because that's add to ranking. Then I told him, okay, you need to create a video for this. So oh, how, how would I do that? Well, do it simple screenshot your image, your computer, run that through, and you're happy, shiny, and when you're done with that, You'll take whatever information you have and we'll do voiceover. So he made his wife do voiceover for a one minute hack, right? But it got 6,000 views and we're now referencing our own information back. This is great. And that is why this one is ranking number one on Google on Petit Pot Time. Doing the work, delivering results, providing value. But we didn't stop there because somebody's going to need to fix that, right? Sysadmin is like, how to fix the potem? No. So we decided to, you know, we're going to rank at least on that too. <laughs> so we, we got both in, right? That's cool. Another case study, um, running over time a bit. Can I get some more minutes? Yep. Awesome. Boom. Another case study, uh, so you don't think that I just do marketing stuff. Uh, this is my store, Thrive. I sell country fashion, all organic, sustainable. It's all cool. It's a small company. We don't have much money and a lot of marketing budget, so we need to hack things to you know, get success. 
since we, this is going to be in Swedish, so bear with me on that. Okay. So, one of the key things that we do is Ekologis Bummel, which is English, uh, organic cotton, right? We're in Sweden, so dot .sc, so we communicate in Swedish, because our customers are Swedish. Nothing weird there. We do own .com as well. But since .com would require way more work for us to drive traffic on an international scale and have more competition, we decide to go with .sc because we don't really ship internationally anyway, especially not at this stage. You know, it's very expensive. But if you Google, uh, if you Google now ekologisk bomull, this is a trendy word. So people mar in marketing places, they pay a lot of money to get high-ranking ads like this. H&M, which is a pretty fucking shitty company, greenwashes themselves by talking about organic cutting and paying a lot of money to be ranking number one. All these are paid. So next time you Google stuff, all the, the, the says anons or paid or, or ads, just go skip those unless you really trust the origin because people are paying for your traffic. So what I had to do is to, I didn't have any money to compete with those budgets, right? These are pretty stiff budgets to do organic cotton in Sweden, especially if you've got H&M and some other companies to compete with. So I did my algorithm hacking, right? Big image, ekologisk bummel, so. Then, time to do the words. So, we got a bunch of ekologisk bummel in there, 19 times, and we're explaining what it is, and we're providing the value difference between what's the difference between certified cotton and organic cotton, what's the difference between ekologisk cotton and non-ekologisk cotton, how does it work, what kind of certificates are involved in this, all that goes into be providing value to whoever searches for ecologist boom And I even tweaked it, so you can see that tiny image there, that says, all the way, ecologist boom got certified. And then ecologist boom soil association. Instead of just giving the name of soil association, I'm putting my keywords in there. I'm kind of stuffing, but not that hard. And then eventually I put a video in here. That guy, it's actually this guy, same, right? But know your audience. My, this is me being all like, yeah, talking about things in Swedish and Gothenburgian accent. This is me doing hacking stuff on the internet. Same dude, different brands. So that's why that is included there. And as you can see here, I'm ranking number one. It's that simple. It's not simple, it takes time and, and, and you need to write the blog post. And, and you will ask yourself, why would you go through all this? Like, why even bother? Because your research deserves views. You put a lot of hours in it. Why not tweak the last ones and make it different? Make it stand out. Deliver it. That way you're going to get shares. That way people are going to like and enjoy your reading. So. Proofread it once more time. Ask somebody else to help you out. And don't do those 600 words medium posts where you talk about how cool you are. It provides no value. So all that is important. If you want to communicate with me, you can follow me on all social. I have a brand, Stoke Frederick. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you and welcome to Content Creation with Security Depressions 101. We're in Sweden. I know no questions. Thank but, you. But if you, have it, if you want to, we can have questions. Or you can catch me in the bar outside, or you can ask him to get drink tickets. Yeah. Because it's that time now. I do have a few. <laughs> but do we have any questions? Anyone? Raise your hands. You can. You got one in the back? I do. Yes. You don't need to. Can you repeat the question, please, Frederick? Okay. So the question is: to double down on your search engine optimization, you need to do a YouTube video. You don't have to, but it's preferred. Yes. No. Op uh, opposite. 
if you embed it, if you, you put it on YouTube, that's where you want to put it. Because YouTube is the world's second biggest search engine. People search for shit there. So you want to be found there. If you put it on your website and some kind of MPEG, what's going to happen is that you're going to not be able to use the CDNs that YouTube provides to get high bandwidth that works with every kind of platform that you use. You own the content, of course, sure, I respect that. Uh, but you're probably going to name it shitty anyway, and it's going to be like an MP4 file, and it's going to be playing there in an embedded player that you think are real cool. But why not put it on YouTube in the first place and have the possibility for it to be indexed by a lot of people? And what's going to happen since YouTube, wait, is Google? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I stopped saying why around. Yeah, Google is YouTube. They're going to promote your shit anyway. And if they can see that you're linking to their stuff using their platform, they're bumping up the ranking. Questions? Anyone else? Okay, mm. let's get drunk. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you so much.